Hatha Yoga, Wikipedia Audio Hatha Yoga is a branch of yoga. The word haha literally means force and thus alludes to a system of physical techniques, 770, 527. In India Hatha Yoga is associated in popular tradition with the yogis of the Natha Sampradaya through its mythical founder Matsyendra Nath. Matsyendra Nath, also known as Meenanath or Minipa in Tibet, is celebrated as a saint in both Buddhist and Hindu Tantric and Hatha Yoga schools. James Mallinson associates Hatha Yoga more closely with the Dashanami Sampradaya and the mystical figure of Dattatriya who is also worshipped by the Nathas. According to the Dattatriya Yoga Sastra, there are two forms of Hatha Yoga, one practiced by Yajnavakaya consisting of the eight limbs of Ashtanga Yoga and another practiced by Kapila consisting of eight Madras. Currently the oldest dated text to describe Hatha Yoga, the Amtasiddhi, comes from a Tantric Buddhist milieu. The oldest texts to use the actual verbiage of Hatha are also Vajrayana Buddhist. In the 20th century, Hatha Yoga, particularly asanas, became popular throughout the world as a form of physical exercise, and is now colloquially termed as simply yoga. Origins According to Mallinson, some Hatha Yoga techniques can be traced back to the epics and the Pali Canon, 770 The Pali Canon contains three passages in which the Buddha describes pressing the tongue against the palate for the purposes of controlling hunger or the mind, depending on the passage. However there is no mention of the tongue being inserted into the nasopharynx as in true Kikar Mudra. The Buddha used a posture where pressure is put on the perineum with the heel, similar to even modern postures used to stimulate kundalini. The earliest mentions of Haha Yaga specifically are also from Buddhist texts, mainly tantric works from the 8th century onwards, such as Puarka S. Vimalaprabhite commentary on the Kakra Tantra. In this text, Haha Yaga is defined within the context of Tantric sexual ritual. The Amtasiddhi, which dates to the 11th century CE, teaches Ma Bandha, Ma Mudra, and Ma Vidha, 771, the Datriya Gastra, probably composed in the 13th century CE, teaches an eightfold yoga identical with Patanjali's eight limbs that it attributes to Yajnavakaya and others as well as eight madras that it says were undertaken by the Rishi Kapila and other Ishis. 771 The Datriya Gastra teaches Ma Mudra, Ma Bandha, Kikar Mudra, Jalandhara Bandha, Duiya Bandha, Mla Bandha. Vipartakara, Vajral, Amaral, and Sahajal, 771, the Rugadharapadati is an anthology of verses on a wide range of subjects compiled in 1363 CE, which in its description of Hatha Yoga includes the Datriya Gastra's teachings on five mudras, 772, the Vivkamrata which is contemporaneous with the Datriya Gastra, teaches Nabho Mudra, Ma Mudra, Vipartakara, and the Three Bandhas, 771, the Goraksa Atak, which is also contemporaneous with the Datriya Gastra, teaches Akta Clan Mudra along with the Three Bandhas, 771, the Kikarvati teaches only the method of Kikar Mudra, 771. When the undying moment does not arise because the breath is unrestrained when the image is seen by means of withdrawal and the other, then, having forcefully made the breath flow in the central channel through the practice of nada, which is about to be explained, should attain the undying moment by restraining the bindu of the bodhisattva in the vajra when it is in the lotus of wisdom. While the actual means of practice are not specified, 
the forcing of the breath into the central channel and the restraining of Bindu are central features of later Haha Yaga practice texts. In medieval times, teachings on yoga were systematized in several texts. The methods of the Amta Siddhai, Datriya Gastra, and Vivkamratat are used to raise and conserve Bindu which was seen as the physical essence of life that was constantly dripping down from the head and being lost. 770 These techniques sought to either physically reverse this process or to use the breath to force Bindu upwards through the central channel. 770 Other texts like the Vivkamrata, Goraksa Sataka, and Kikarvati also teach the raising of Kualan. 771 The aims of these practices were cities and muddy. 771 the only other texts older than the Hathapradpik to teach Hatha Yoga Mudras are the Shiva Samhita, Yogabhya, Amara Uaprabhadha, and Rigadharapadati. 771 to 772. Chapter 1 with 67 verses deals with setting the proper environment for yoga, ethical duties of a yogi, and asanas. Chapter 2 with 78 verses deals with the pranayama and the satkarmani. Chapter 3 with 130 verses discusses the madras and their benefits. Chapter 4 with 114 verses deals with meditation and samadhi as a journey of personal spiritual growth. The Hathapradpik, also called Hatha Yoga Pradipika is an important and one of the most influential texts of the Hatha Yoga. It was compiled by Svtamrma in the 15th century CE from earlier Hatha Yoga texts. 772 These earlier texts were of Vedanta or non-dual Shaiva orientation. From both, the Hathapradpik borrowed non-duality philosophies. According to James Mallinson, this reliance on non-dualism helped Hatha Yoga thrive in the medieval period as non-dualism became the dominant soteriological method in scholarly religious discourse in India. Hatha Yoga Pradipika lists 35 great yoga siddhas starting with Adi Natha followed by Matsyendranath and Gorakshanath. It includes information about Shatkarma, 15 Asana, Pranayama and Kumhaka, Madras, Meditation, Chakras, Kundalini, Nadanusandhana, and other topics. Amara Ua Zasana, a Sharada script manuscript of this Hatha Yoga text was copied in 1525 CE. It is notable because fragments of this manuscript have also been found near Kyuka in Xinjiang. The text discusses Kikarimadra, but calls it Saranas, Hatha Ratnavali, a 17th century text that states Hatha Yoga consists of 10 madras, 8 cleansing methods, 9 kumhakas, and 84 asanas. The text is also notable for dropping the Nadanu Sandhana technique, Hathapradapika Siddhantamudavali an early 18th century text that expands on Hathapradpik by adding practical insights and citations to other Indian texts on yoga, Garanda Samhita, a 17th or 18th century text that presents Hatha Yoga as Gattastha Yoga, according to Mallinson. It presents six cleansing methods, 32 asanas, 25 madras and 10 pranayamas. It is one of the most encyclopedic texts on Hatha Yoga, Jagpradipaka, an 18th century Braj language text that presents Hatha Yoga simply as yoga, composed by Ramanandi J. Atarama. It presents six cleansing methods, 84 asanas, 24 madras and 8 kumhakas. Earliest Textual References Hathapradapika is the best known and most widely used Hatha Yoga text. It consists of 389 shlokas in four chapters. The Hatha Yoga Pradapika and the Garanda Samhita are derived from older Sanskrit texts. In Hatha Yoga Pradapika, 
Swatmarama introduces his system as preparatory stage for physical purification that the body practices for higher meditation or yoga. It is based on asanas and pranayama. Post Hathaprataphika texts on Hatha Yoga include 773 to 774. Historically, Hatha Yoga has been a broad movement across the Indian traditions, openly available to anyone. Hatha Yoga, like other methods of yoga, can be practiced by all, regardless of sex, caste, class, or creed. Many texts explicitly state that it is practice alone that leads to success. Sectarian affiliation and philosophical inclination are of no importance. The texts of Hatha Yoga, with some exceptions, do not include teachings on metaphysics or sex-specific practices. According to Mallinson, the Hatha Yoga represented a trend towards democratization of yoga insights and religion similar to the Bhakti movement. It eliminated the need for either ascetic renunciation or priestly intermediaries, ritual paraphernalia, and sectarian initiations. This led to its broad historic popularity in India. Later in the 20th century, states Mallinson, this disconnect of Hatha Yoga from religious aspects and the democratic access of Hatha Yoga enabled it to spread worldwide. Between the 17th and 19th century, however, the various urban Hindu and Muslim elites and ruling classes viewed yogis with derision. They were persecuted in the Mughal era, with Aurangzeb beheading their leaders. Hatha Yoga remained popular in rural India. They were viewed as champions of the persecuted, their Hatha Yoga practice becoming an alibi for training in militant resistance groups that were armed, violent Akaras targeting the ruling officials. Negative impression for the Hatha Yogis continued during the British colonial rule era. According to Mark Singleton, this historical negativity and colonial antipathy likely motivated Swami Vivekananda to make an emphatic distinction between merely physical exercises of Hatha Yoga and the higher spiritual path of Raja Yoga. This common disdain by the officials and intellectuals slowed the study and adoption of Hatha Yoga. Medieval Systematization Classical Hatha Yoga Modern Hatha Yoga, of the type seen in the West, has been greatly influenced by the school of Tirumalai Krishnamakarya, who taught from 1924 until his death in 1989. Among his students prominent in popularizing yoga in the West were K. Pat Abhai Joys famous for popularizing the vigorous Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga style. B.K.S. Iyengar who emphasized alignment and the use of props, Indra Devi, and Krishnamakarya's son T.K.V. Dzikakar. Hathapradpik post Hathapradpik Texts Modern Era Practice Proper Diet Another better known school of Hatha Yoga in the 20th century has been the Divine Life Society founded by Swami Sivananda of Rishikesh and his many disciples including, among others, Swami Vishnu Devananda founder of International Sivananda Yoga Vedanta Centers, Swami Satyananda of the Bihar School of Yoga, and Swami Satchidananda of Integral Yoga. After about 1975, Yoga techniques have become increasingly popular globally, in both developed and developing countries. The Bihar School of Yoga has been one of the largest Hatha Yoga teacher training center in India, but is little known in Europe and the Americas. In the West, Krishnamacharya link schools have been historically more well known. Examples of other branded forms of yoga with some controversies, 
that contain Hatha Yoga methodologies include Anasara Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, Bikram Yoga, Integral Yoga, Iyengar Yoga, Jivanmudi Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, Kripalu Yoga, Kriya Yoga, Siddha Yoga, Vini Yoga, Vinyasa Yoga, and White Lotus Yoga. Hatha Yoga practice has many elements, both behavioral and of practice. The Hatha Yoga texts state that a successful yogi has certain characteristics. Section 1.16 of the Hatha Yoga Pratipika, for example, states these characteristics to be Utsaha, Sahasa, Dharya, Jnanatattva, Nishkaya and Tyaga. Proper Body Cleansing In the Western culture, Hatha Yoga is typically understood as asanas and it can be practiced as such. In the Indian and Tibetan traditions, Hatha Yoga is much more. It extends well beyond being a sophisticated physical exercise system, and integrates ideas of ethics, diet, cleansing, pranayama, meditation and a system for spiritual development of the yogi. The Hatha Yoga texts place major emphasis on Mitahara, which connotes measured diet or moderate eating. For example, sections 1.58 to 1.63 and 2.14 of the Hatha Yoga Pratipika and sections 5.16 to 5.32 of Garanda Samhita discuss the importance of proper diet to the body. They link the food one eats and one's eating habits to balancing the body and to gaining most benefits from the practice of Hatha Yoga. Eating, states Garanda Samhita, is a form of a devotional act to the temple of body, as if one is expressing affection for the gods. Similarly, Sections 3.20 and 5.25 of the Shiva Samhita text on Hatha Yoga includes Mitahara as an essential part of a Hatha Yoga holistic practice. Verses 1.57 through 1.63 of the critical edition of Hatha Yoga Pratipika suggests that taste cravings should not drive one's eating habits. Rather the best diet is one that is tasty, nutritious, and likable as well as sufficient to meet the needs of one's body and for one's inner self. It recommends that one must eat only when one feels hungry and neither overeat nor eat to completely fill the capacity of one's stomach, rather leave a quarter portion empty and fill three quarters with quality food and fresh water. According to another Hatha Yoga classic Gorakshasataka, eating a controlled diet is one of the three important parts of a complete and successful practice. The text does not provide details or recipes. The text states, according to Mallinson, food should be unctuous and sweet, one must not overeat and stop when still a bit hungry, and whatever one eats should aim to please the Shiva. Hatha Yoga teaches various steps of inner body cleansing with consultations of one's yoga teacher. Its texts vary in specifics and number of cleansing methods, ranging from simple hygiene practices to the peculiar exercises such as reversing seminal fluid flow. The most common list is called Shatkarmani, or six cleansing actions, Dhati, Vasti, Nidhi, Trataka, Nali, and Kapalabhati. The actual procedure for cleansing varies by the Hatha Yoga text, with some suggesting water wash and others describing the use of cleansing aids such as cloth. Prima is made out of two Sanskrit words pra and ima. Proper Breathing some Hatha Yoga texts teach breath exercises but do not refer to it as pranayama. For example, Garanda Samhita in section 3.55 calls it Gatavastha. In others, the term Kumhaka or Pranasamridha replaces pranayama. Regardless of the nomenclature, proper breathing and the use of breathing techniques during a posture is a mainstay of Hatha Yoga. Its texts state that proper breathing exercises cleanses and balances the body. 
Pranayama is one of the core practices of Hatha Yoga, found in its major texts as one of the limbs regardless of whether the total number of limbs taught are four or more. It is the practice of consciously regulating breath, a concept shared with all schools of yoga. This is done in several ways, inhaling and then suspending exhalation for a period, exhaling and then suspending inhalation for a period, slowing the inhalation and exhalation, consciously changing the time slash length of breath, combining these with certain focused muscle exercises. Pranayama or proper breathing is an integral part of asanas. According to section 1.38 of Hatha Yoga Pradipka, the Siddhasana is the most suitable and easiest posture to learn breathing exercises. Proper Postures The different Hatha Yoga texts discuss pranayama in various ways. For example, Hatha Yoga Pradipka in section 2.71 explains it as a threefold practice, Rikeka, Purika, and Kumhaka. During the exhalation and inhalation, the text states that three things move, air, prana, and yogi's thoughts, and all three are intimately connected. It is come haka where stillness and dissolution emerges. The text divides come haka into two kinds, sahita and kavala. Sahita come haka is further subdivided into two types, retention with inhalation, retention with exhalation. Each of these breath units are then combined in different permutations, time lengths, posture, and targeted muscle exercises in the belief that these aerate and assist blood flow to targeted regions of the body. Before starting yoga practice, state the Hatha Yoga texts, the yogi must establish a suitable place for the yoga practice. This place is away from all distractions preferably a mathika that is distant from falling rocks, fire, and a damp shifting surface. Kundalini in later Hatha Yoga Meditation Goals Once a peaceful stable location has been set, the yogi begins the posture exercises called asanas. These Hatha Yoga postures come in numerous forms. For a beginner yogi, states Mircea Ilyad, these asanas are uncomfortable, typically difficult, cause the body shakes and typically unbearable to hold for extended periods of time. However, with repetition and persistence, as the muscle tone improves, the effort reduces and posture improves. According to the Hatha Yoga texts, each posture becomes perfect when the effort disappears, one no longer thinks about the posture and one's body position, breathes normally per pranayama, and is able to dwell in one's meditation. The asanas discussed in different Hatha Yoga texts vary significantly. Unlike ancient yoga texts of Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism, it is the Hatha Yoga texts that provide step-by-step -step methodology on how to enter into an asana. The Hindu text Garanda Samhita, for example, in section 2.8 describes the Padmasana for meditation. Most asanas are inspired by nature, such as a form of union with symmetric, harmonious flowing shapes of animals, birds, or plants. Early Hatha Yoga was used to prevent the dripping of Bindu from the heads of men, 770 The two early Hatha Yoga techniques were to stand on one's head or make breath flow into the center channel which forces Bindu up, 770. However in later Hatha Yoga, the Kaula visualization of Kualini rising through a system of chakras is overlaid onto the earlier Bindu-oriented system. 770, 774 The aim was to access Amta situated in the head, which subsequently floods the body. 770, 774 This goal is in contradiction with the early Hatha Yoga goal of preserving Bindu, 
770, 774. The Hatha Yoga Pratipika text dedicates almost a third of its verses to meditation. Similarly, other major texts of Hatha Yoga such as Shiva Samhita and Garanda Samhita discuss meditation. In all three texts, meditation is the ultimate goal of all the preparatory cleansing, asanas, pranayama and other steps. The aim of this meditation is to realize not a Brahman, or the complete absorption and union with the Brahman through inner mystic sound. According to Guy Beck a professor of religious studies known for his studies on yoga and music, a Hatha yogi in this stage of practice seeks inner union of physical opposites, into an inner state of samadhi that is described by Hatha yoga texts in terms of divine sounds, and as a union with Nada Brahman in musical literature of ancient India. The aims of Hatha Yoga in various Indian traditions have been the same as those of other varieties of yoga. These include physical cities and spiritual liberation. According to Michael Burley, some of the cities are symbolic references to the cherished soteriological goals of Indian religions. For example, the Vayu Siddhai or conquest of the air literally implies rising into the air as in levitation but it likely has symbolic meaning of a state of consciousness into a vast ocean of space or voidness ideas found respectively in Hinduism and Buddhism. Some traditions such as the Kaula Tantric sect of Hinduism and Sahajiya Tantric sect of Buddhism pursued more esoteric goals such as alchemy, magic, Kalavankana and Parakaya Pravsa. James Mallinson, however, disagrees and suggests that such fringe practices are far removed from the mainstream yoga's goal as meditation-driven means to liberation in Indian religions. The majority of historic Hatha Yoga texts do not give any importance to cities. The mainstream practice considered the pursuit of magical powers as a distraction or hindrance to Hatha Yoga's ultimate aim of spiritual liberation, self-knowledge, or release from rebirth that the Indian traditions call Muddhi or Moksha. The goals of Hatha Yoga, in its earliest texts, were linked to Mumukshu. The later texts added and experimented with the goals of Bubhukshu. Hatha Yoga is a branch of yoga. It shares numerous ideas and doctrines with other forms of yoga, such as the more ancient yoga system taught by Patanjali. The differences are in the addition of some limbs, and different emphasis on other limbs. For example, pranayama is crucial in all yogas, but it is the mainstay of Hatha Yoga. Madras and certain Kundalini-related ideas are included in Hatha Yoga, but not mentioned in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Patanjali Yoga considers asanas important but dwells less on various asanas, unlike Hatha Yoga texts. In contrast, the Hatha Yoga texts consider meditation as important but dwell less on meditation methodology, unlike the Patanjali Yoga. The Hatha Yoga texts acknowledge and refer to Patanjali Yoga, attesting to the latter's antiquity. However, this acknowledgement is in the passing, and the Hatha Yoga texts offer no serious commentary or exposition of the Patanjali's system. This suggests that Hatha Yoga likely developed as a satellite branch of the more ancient yoga. According to P.V. Kane, Patanjali Yoga concentrates more on the yoga of the mind, while Hatha Yoga focuses on body and health. Some Hindu texts do not recognize this distinction. For example, the Yogatattva Upanishad teaches a system that includes all limbs of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, and all additional elements of Hatha Yoga practice. The impact of Hatha Yoga on physical and mental health has been a topic of systematic studies. Some scholars state that a regular and proper yoga practice yields health benefits. 
Others state that the results of these studies have been mixed and inconclusive, with cancer studies suggesting none to unclear effectiveness, and others suggesting yoga may reduce risk factors and aid in a patient's psychological healing process. Yoga's combined focus on mindfulness, breathing and physical movements brings health benefits with regular participation. Yoga participants report better sleep, increased energy levels and muscle tone, relief from muscle pain and stiffness, improved circulation, and overall better general health. The breathing aspect of yoga can benefit heart rate and blood pressure. The 2012 Yoga in America survey, conducted by Harris Interactive on behalf of Yoga Journal, shows that the number of adult practitioners in the U.S. is 20.4 million, or 8.7%. The survey reported that 44% of those not practicing yoga said they are interested in trying it. Differences from Patanjali Yoga Health Impact Studies Notes Bibliography